Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be making this material that puts scuffs on the edges of your objects and then using the same technique you can also put dirt in the crevices. This is not limited to metal or screws of course, you can use any object you want and you could even apply this to a whole different texture, you just need to adjust things accordingly to what kind of texture it is. So to start off I'm just going to remove this material and then split my view over so that I can see the screw and then change this side to the shader editor. We just want to make a new material and keep the principled, make it a little bit gray, metallic, and then just keep the roughness in the middle. And this is of course if you want to make this exact metal material, but if you have a whole different texture set up with maybe a PBR material, keep that, don't mess with any of this, you can just keep your principled BSDF exactly how you have it or however you want it. But now we need to add a mix shader and then a glossy if you want to do like metal underneath, kind of like some scratches or something like that. Make it darker gray and then bring the roughness way down. So right now there's nothing separating the glossy and the principled, it's just they're mixed together, there's nothing to tell it where it should be scuffed and where it shouldn't be. What we're going to use to differentiate the two is an ambient occlusion node. That's going to be the base for all of this. So you're going to put a color into there and not much is going to happen. So then you want a color ramp and you just need to bring the values way down and also invert them so that it's kind of like you could say inside out so now we're already seeing that there's just this gray part right here but it's flipped the wrong way so inside and only local so you want to get a geometry node we're going to use the pointiness and feed that into the distance of the ambient occlusion but you also need a color ramp and a clamp. With those two we can adjust this a little bit more and make it more how we want it. You want to invert those two and just keep them down here like on the left and you could even change the black to a little bit more of a gray and now you can see that already we have the dark glossy parts only on the edges and everything else is just the gray screw metal. Now we haven't done anything to the clamp so you want to put the minimum down to about negative 0.5 and then just increase the maximum like a lot. With my other screw I went to about 70 so that's where I'm gonna go now. Okay so that's all we have for this part of it. So what we need now is to add a little bit of detail in our scuffs. You need a noise texture and a math node. We're going to put the math node in this color ramp over here and change it to multiply. Then we want to put the factor of the noise texture in the bottom value. Put a color ramp in between the two. And you want to bring these together. So we increase the contrast basically and the detail. The noise is really large, that's why we have these just big gaps. So you want to scale it up quite a bit, but not too much. Increase the detail to about six or seven then just up the roughness to somewhere that you feel is good. You know what, I think we should bring the scale down quite a bit. Let's go to 0.5. Okay, that's looking better. Now to make the noise look a little better, we want a texture coordinate node. And just put the object into the vector. And that'll just kind of make everything a little more uniform throughout the screw. 
I actually just remembered on the scuffs, the maximum on the clamp node doesn't need to be high. It needs to be a lot lower. Let's do point 0.2. Now adjusting the color ramp with the noise node is going to make a big difference with your scuffs because it spaces them out more, makes it a lot more realistic. Okay, so that's pretty much the scuffs. That's all you got to do for it. It's not that hard. Now to put the dirt in the crevices of the screw, all we need to do is completely duplicate this entire setup and then just add another mix. And this mix, instead of being glossy, it's going to be diffuse. If you're doing dirt, you of course want kind of a brown color. And then just put the factor in there. And right now, because it's, of course, following the same stuff as the scuffs, it's where the scuffs are. So we need to change a few things, mostly just inverting stuff. So this black value needs to be before the white instead of the white in front of the black. See the difference it makes? So that needs to be changed. And the next thing is scaling up the noise. Just do about one. And you want the roughness all the way up. And spread the color ramp out. Because you want this to be a lot lighter. You want it to be kind of subtle and not so, like, intense. So this is the one where we increase the clamp maximum to around 70. And there, now we have dirt in the screw. So that is actually pretty much it to making the scuffs and the dirt. It's, again, pretty simple. Just using ambient occlusion and the geometry node creates this really nice effect that you can apply to about anything to add a little bit of realism, some imperfection. I hope this helped you. Bye.